convidar ao palco para dar sequência aqui, para a gente falar um pouquinho sobre site search. E eu vou estar convidando o Ed Hoffman, please, para poder bater uma palavrinha com a gente sobre isso. Obrigada. Thank you very much, and it's great to be back in Brazil. Really appreciate it. I should turn the translation off. That's not helping me. Pardon me. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about the importance of site search. We've heard so much about you know comparison shopping search and paid search, uh, organic search, and I'm going to try to connect the uh, importance of web search with what happens within your site. Um, we come to this. Uh, sort of suggestion about it, the importance of a site search because we work with about 500 sites around the world, including these brands um, that you see on the screen there, uh, Ponta Frio, Fast, Shop, Festa, Express, and, and a few others here in Brazil. And we basically power the search within their, these e-commerce sites, helping people find what they want to buy. Because if they can't find it, they can't buy it, right? So uh, clicking onto the next slide. No, I think I turned it off. There we go. So the way people search within a site is heavily influenced by their experience with web search. We, would, we just heard a lot about shopping search and the unique capabilities of Google Shopping and Buscapay. Um, how people search within your site is heavily influenced by their experience on Google, on Facebook, on you know, even iTunes. So people are searching these kinds of properties day in and day out. They're becoming used to searching. Uh, and so when they get to your website, the very first thing that they're going to do, in many cases, is go to the search box. So you could do a lot of work to create a great image and a great home page. But when they get to your site, research shows and eye tracking studies show they're drawn to the search box, often in the upper right hand corner, and they use that search box to find what they want to buy. So you think about your own behavior. When you get to a website, do you go to the search box first? Do you use that site search instead of the navigation? Um, research shows that people, about 43% of people search first. Uh, another 40, 45% of people will use the navigation. And then the remaining 10% will go back and forth between searching and browsing. So making that search work well is important. Uh, the 43% figure comes from research from a combination of, our, of um, Nielsen Norman Group, which is really a pioneer in usability research. Uh, they ha they uh, operate a website called useit.com, very helpful. Uh, also, Marketing Sherpa has confirmed this, this figure, and we've seen it across all of our clients as well. Uh, so, you know, 43% of people go straight to the search box. It's important that it actually works. Uh, people who use search within a site convert better than people who are just navigating, following the browsing behaviors. And I don't think that's because searching causes people to order. It's just that the later they are in the buying cycle, the more likely they are to use that keyword search feature when they're earlier in the exploration process. They're more likely to browse and, and explore. So search is a fundamental part of the web experience as well as the experience within your site. Um, and it's getting more so every year. A search tool can also help you understand the language of your visitors. The way that they search for things is actually a way of describing the product. So you may have your way of describing it, but a way of getting into the mind of the consumer is to watch how they search for things and, and to glean insights from the consumer's behavior within the search function. You can actually figure out the way that you should call it yourself. Uh, we've seen clients who have a thousand products have uh, 30, 40,000 unique uh, search phrases in a given month. Uh, it's just hu a huge variety of search terms that are used and the same is true of, of the web search engines, Google, etc. We've done some research and 73% of visitors will leave a site if, uh, within a minute or a minute and a half if they don't find what they're looking for. And that's a combination of searching not, search not working, navigation not working, product descriptions not being clear. Um, and by watching the behavior, you can actually help understand the, the visitor behavior, as I was saying a moment ago. Um, in short, without effective search, you're going to lose business. And with effective search, you can make more money. So now I want to talk about some specific 
features and um, best practices around site search and hopefully leave some time for questions. Um, so to start with, the placement of the search box is very important. It needs to be obvious. It needs to be big. It needs to have enough room that people can type a multi-term query into the search box so they can find what they want. Um, it shouldn't be hiding unless it doesn't work well and then you maybe want to hide it. Um, so in this case, the client's got it really prominent above the, above the fold. Um, they've got an obvious um, search metaphor with the, with the eyeglass uh, and they've got the big button, but it sh you shouldn't have to hit the button for the search to work. You should be able to hit return like you can on Google. You shouldn't have to retrain visitors to use your website. Here's another example, nice prominent search feature. And here's another example. Um, this last example, um, I can't pronounce the Portuguese, but it says, you know, search here for what you're looking for. Having that text in the search box can give people clues on the kinds of things they can search for. So like search for item number or key keyword will train people if that's the kind of content that's on your site. Um, so we re really recommend having explanatory text in the search box. And we also recommend having that text go away when they click into it. It's a very simple technique, um, a little bit of JavaScript so that the terms don't end up being your most popular search term. Having autocomplete or, or type ahead functionality is becoming pretty commonplace on web properties. You know, Facebook, Google, uh, iTunes, they, they have autocomplete, they, they predict what, what you want. So having that feature implemented within your site can really help people find what they want to buy. So with a single keystroke, I've now seen 15 different things that the client has, and that can help me understand what the site has actually helps with discovery, helps with cross-selling and upselling, and it also helps with conversions. So the people that interact with this uh, autocomplete feature have a higher conversion rate and a higher average order value than the people who don't interact with that or if you don't have this feature. Another way of providing autocomplete is to show not just search terms but products, and so that people can skip the search process entirely, click through to a product directly from the search box, so they've entered a single character, S, and, and they can see that you have tennis shoes and dress shoes, women's shoes and men's shoes. They can go, they can start to discover things very quickly. It's, a, it's an immersive experience, and it's one which really helps you sell more shoes. People that interact with the product section of this Rich Autocomplete have a, a 2x conversion rate, um, so twice as many people uh, convert that interact with that. And of the people who do buy, the people who interact with this have a 17% higher average order value. So if you want to sell more stuff and make more money from, from those customers, this is a great way to do it. Another way to encourage folks to search um, is to have a search bar that floats as you scroll down a longer page. So if you if you're scrolling down, if the search box can be made to persist at the top of the browser window. Because uh, if they are, if people who search are more likely to convert, maybe you can have more people search. Uh, that's the idea. So we've had a client implement this, and they saw a 24% uh, increase in per visit value based on their Google Analytics reports. And it basically looks like this. So little piece of stuff, a little piece of HTML that stays at the top of the page. Um, relevance in any site search tool is crucial. If it's not relevant, people don't trust it. They don't, th they'll exit the site. Um, we watch what people click on and use that to improve relevance over time. Um, it's an important technique. So I've talked a lot about site search. The way the search tool looks, the keyword search tool within a site, should look, it should be similarly um, organized when you talk about navigation. So how you, when people browse through the site, the look and feel and the behavior and the sorting um, and refinement options should be the same whether, you're, when, whether you started with a key phrase or you started with a click in a category or a brand. So giving visitors a consistent experience across searching and navigating can really help the overall user trust of your site. 
uh, in addition to the structure that's inherent in your site, your category, subcategory, brand, uh, and product attributes, um, we give visitors uh, the ability to refine results based on how other people have searched for things. So in this example, a product like this memorable vase has people having searched with the phrase calla lily and memorable to get to that product. Those are behavior and there are other ways of describing this. There's also search suggestions. So these are other terms that are correlated with the phrase in question. So looks like they search for lilies and these are other terms that are correlated to lilies, including 4298, which is obviously some sort of catalog number that's correlated to lilies. And what happens is a visitor clicks on this, any of these terms, and they get a refined experience, get some more results. <coughs> and click. So I um, talked about the consistency of refinement choices. In this case, um, we're giving people the ability to refine by category, container, color, price range, and even the taste. The taste is not something that this particular retailer described. It's what their users have said the thing tastes like after buying it. So it's actually using user-generated attributes as a way of refining um, results. It's kind of, some people call that a folksonomy. Um, can be really helpful in conversion. Here's a little bit bigger view of that. And giving people the ability to select multiple colors can be kind of cool. Showing ratings and reviews and the results. Um, giving people lots of choices to sort by. In this case, um, you've got the ability to sort by how many packages, what the rating is, high price, low price, best selling. Um, how many of you have video content on your websites? Where either YouTube or your own proprietary video? Still, still an emerging area. So as you add video, uh, making it available in par as part of the search results can really help surface that video. Video it can be very helpful to driving conversion. People who consume online video about products have a very good char uh, conversion characteristic. So one way to get more people to see the video is to incorporate it into the search results. So here we search for workout music at this fitness site and here's a, a variety of different uh, pieces of video about that. Les Mills is a workout guy and that's available right in this, you can play the video right in the search results. Um, another technique that's really helpful is to have a smooth experience as you refine results. So as you refine by category or brand, um, we use a technique called Ajax that gives a nice modern smooth experience. Uh, I mentioned before, including ratings and reviews can help conversion because it'll give people a sense of trust about what other people thought about it. These folks have taken it to the next level by showing the attributes of the people that did the product rating. So top rated by 15 to 20 year olds or top rated um, by people th in a newer version of this site, they actually have top rated based on the shape of the shopper. So <coughs> uh, pear shaped person liked it, a thin person liked it, knowing that they liked it can really help give people confidence in that experience. So no matter how much, how well your search engine works every once in a while, people are gonna get no results. And uh, keeping them on the site when they get no results can sort of rescue the day and save you a, a customer that's about to leave your site. So having a good, helpful, no results page can really um, make a difference in helping keep people on your site. Um, this is one example of it. Uh, giving people the ability to refine by all the search terms that you know. Giving people a tag cloud approach to looking at no results. Um, uh, we've, we've seen an emerging trend where people care about Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube. Uh, this client sells knitting supplies and it turns out knitting is a very social activity. People get together to knit and they get together online to talk about knitting. So they've, this, we've actually incorporated 
Twitter content, Facebook content, and YouTube content into their site by virtue of, of searching. So if you search for needles or search for wool, it's part of the, part of the on-site experience bringing um, social media right onto your site itself. Another way to do that, so there's a tab here, it's a little blurry, but it says social networks. Um, we've also got clients doing something pretty cool, which is to incorporate the number of Facebook likes at the product level on a search results page and to make it possible to refine by number of likes so you can sort by most liked item. Um, pretty simple way to leverage all the social media work you're already doing. Um, so measuring uh, what key performance indicators are for site search can help you continue to improve the experience, continue to make more money from those visitors um, as they search. Uh, we look at things like the search exit uh, ratio, try to make that one go down. Um, page views per visit could be good, could be bad, but you want to keep track of it. Um, want to watch how many people are getting null results or zero results and try to make that number go down over time. Um, watch how, what percentage of people who use the search click through to a product as opposed to clicking back to the home page or clicking on the help button or some other you know, uh, example of an unsuccessful outcome. So basically just finding what's important and measuring it and staying on top of it and as you do with the rest of your analytics. Here's a, an interesting bit of search analytics where the searches with poor results actually measures the relative click-through rate of different search phrases. You, you, you often have a report of the search terms that resulted in no, in no results at all, but what if you have searches where a lot of people are searching for it but nobody's clicking through? That's something that you need to fix. And this report here shows that the number one most searched for term that is, has a low click-through rate is what are you looking for, which happened to be the text in the search box, and people just kind of click the, the search button. But then after that are some fairly specific terms with, um, in some cases, a lot of results, but very low click-through rates under 10%, which is an opportunity that needs to be kind of addressed by the merchant. You can also do multivariate testing. Uh, you could use a, something like uh, Google Website Optimizer. You could use uh, Omniture Test and Target. We've got a multivariate testing tool that lets you test different algorithms and different layouts. Um, in this particular example, we're measuring grid view versus list view. So in the first case, the, there's more products above the fold. In the case on the right, there's much more textual descriptions about the rubber ducks. And uh, this is showing that the uh, list view is uh, got a 61% um, confidence factor that it's beating the average. So that's the one that won. That's what I wanted to cover. I, I uh, appreciate your time. And again, it's great to be back here. Look forward to answering any questions that people have if there is time available. Um, but I'm going to. Alguma pergunta, pessoal? Não dá para ver, agora acendeu as luzes. Obrigada. Alguma question, pergunta? Ok. Fique com a mão assim, por favor. Hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, how, which tips do you give us to integrate that with other tools that help us to measure which search are being more profit and having a good click through?
você vai precisar repetir, por gentileza, a sua pergunta em português, que aí vai traduzir para ele, ok? Ok. Está pronto? Perdão, mas o inglês aqui não dá para poder interpretar para ele. Você pergunta outra em vez em inglês, ele vai traduzir para você, ok? Você, ah, já tem a tradução, desculpa. <risos> Sorry. Posso so, perguntar? Ok. No. Quais dicas e ferramentas para integrar com outras, com outras plataformas ou outras ferramentas para medir quais buscas vendem mais ou convertem melhor? So, so my, um, my response on what other tools exist to help, help with conversion uh, analytics and, and to help with the monitoring the performance of your site search is that if you have web analytics, there is a um, techniques for making Google Analytics track site search. The same is true of core metrics, of, of Omniture, of web trends. And you, in, in Omniture, for instance, it's called product finding methods. But the basic idea is that your web analytics should track the people who use search and the degree to which the people who use search convert and, and in co combination with our analytics will help expose the terms that are particularly troubling and the kinds of behaviors that are associated with conversion and the ones that aren't associated with conversion and try to emphasize uh, the ones that are helping you make more money. Anything else? Mais alguma pergunta? No. Ed? Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Uma salva de palmas, por favor, pessoal. Obrigada.